few topics today, so, um, and they will be uh, working from home, the pros and cons. Uh, Jane and I went and saw Rent the Musical yesterday, so we'll give our thoughts and review on that. And then um, we'll have a little bit of a health discussion uh, to do with mental health. And then we'll um, wrap it up. So uh, feel free to um, have... uh, comments and interaction um, I can actually see the comments come through so if you uh, can hear this uh, just give us a thumbs up uh, if you're on the Facebook group for lifestyle and living out uh, specific group um, you will need to click on uh, the little banner there that says uh, if you want to be saying to when you interact, um, and that'll allow permission into uh, StreamYard for us to um, now. Whoever just said so, sorry, I missed it. Uh, you haven't missed anything yet. So uh, the shows will be around ten fifteen, ten thirty um, each Sunday. So uh, jump in, join in. Um, so, the person on said, sorry, so sorry, I missed it. Um, what did you miss? Me? Or did you miss rent? Or did you miss... Um, think you missed the show? Because if you have, you haven't missed the show, because we're still... We're still here. We'll still be here for about another uh, 40 minutes or so. So uh, bear with me. I'm just trying to jump over this somewhere. Technology. You've got to love it. Uh, groups. Let's see. If I sneak over into the group. Uh, hi, Don. Um, so um, there's a little trigger in there that says... Um, to click on hopefully it's there if not i'll put it in there for future streams where we can actually see who people are and uh, interact but yep it is all good so um first topic i want to talk about is working from home it's come up in australia i don't know what it's like around the world where a lot of businesses are wanting the people to go back into the office and as someone that's worked from home for quite a period of time I thought I would just uh, thought I would just share a few thoughts. So I've worked from home. So now, Cat, if it's coming through loud and clear, can you give me a thumbs up so I can get rid of the headphones? <laughs> so <laughs> this is how I pick up that everything sounded fine. And if once it's up and running, hopefully someone can give me a thumbs up and say it's going great. But basically, uh, worked from home for quite a long time. and worked for myself since 2002, first as a photographer and then moved up to Queensland where I am today, uh, run a photography studio and then worked for real estate and different things and then had some issues and then you can actually see those issues and stories on our website, lifestyleandliving.com.au. But working from home has a few good sides of it because now I work from home for a large organisation and it has its freedoms and it has its downfalls. And it also has downfalls for organisations as well. And I may go into that a little bit, but it's mainly to do with you as a person and working from home. So you've got the flexibility of work hours. In my case, I don't. it's a nine to five day which is pretty regimented, breaks and and all that. So it's pretty cool. You have the flexibility. So hang on, got to get rid of the headphones. So, you know, you, you've got to do X amount of work and things like that. So, But if you're working for yourself, you've got that flexibility, but you've also got to create a lot of uh, good habits to work around. Some say it increases productivity, 
if you're disciplined and you're working for yourself, yes, you can increase productivity. I know you'll hear me talk about Don a lot. Don's a great friend, probably my best friend in the world over in Canada. Don is one of the most disciplined workers I've seen who works on his own. And there's another gentleman that hopefully he'll get involved a little bit, uh, Dave Prosser, who helps me out with a few marketing strategies. He's very regimented in how he goes about working for himself and working from home. Yeah, it can give you a good work-life balance, but there's a couple of traps with that as well. But yeah, I enjoy it. There's a lot of benefits. Jane and I will probably go down to, to one car, so there's all of that side of things. There's the non-travel. We joke about me having to beat the traffic to go to the office, which is downstairs. So there's those sort of things that are a benefit, but there's a lot of, uh, not a lot, but quite a few cons, I would say, against working from home. And they're not what I don't, I don't think people think about them as much as I do now. One of the things I have been through is mental illness, ended up in a mental health unit. And part of that was from opioids, which I'll talk about later on. But it's also about isolation. And this is what can happen with working from home. And your family goes off, kids go off to school, and you're here and you're isolated from a workforce. Even working in the job that I do now, there's a lot of uh, isolation still. Even though we have contact and constant contact with our work colleagues, we can talk on Microsoft Teams and things like that. But the one thing that working from home doesn't do is the tactile thing of face-to-face interaction. And you've got to be aware of that. So to get around that, if you're working for yourself, join some of the local things like commerce groups and places like that where you can go and actually, I don't know if it's B&I was a, a big one when we were working in a business, which was good to get to meet other people and other businesses. The other side of things, working from home, there's a lot of distractions um, I'm fortunate enough where I'm separated from the house. So we've got a comment and we'll pop this up. We'll pop this up. So I think one of the biggest challenges in working from home is the fact that it's so easy to get distracted by so many things like dishes, access to the TV, chores, and the easier to do versus what you should be doing for your business. Totally, totally agree. I was getting to that point, and whoever this person is, the uh, it may be, it may be Don, maybe someone else, but we'll fix the Facebook user symbol up later. But uh, yeah, that that is, and I'll leave this up because it is a very good point. This is, in my opinion, the biggest downfall of working from home. You can go and do the dishes, or you can hang the washing out or you there's just too many things around so this is where i come back to discipline and having to be disciplined to work from home and the one that i've just done as you probably if you've seen anything that i've done before i was in a different location i have now set up a little desk and where i work upstairs and if you look behind me you probably notice it's in the bedroom so what I was having trouble with, and this was part of the downfall of not being consistent with lifestyle and living and things like that, was that this setup was downstairs with the work setup and I couldn't separate it. Now I've separated it and now I'm really enjoying getting ready and getting everything done for lifestyle and living and for our little logo for the young at heart. So that's where... And that's what you've got to do. You've got to lock yourself into a, a bedroom or I've heard of instances where people have even put bolts on their doors on the inside so the family can't come in and, and annoy them. So it even comes down to being distracted by pets and things like that. So it has its lot of, lot of its good and its bad. But for an organisation, and a lot of people don't think about this, a lot of companies 
have head offices or offices that you go to, which cost a lot of money. And so they've got that cost involved as well as paying you to work from home. So they're starting to push to get back into the office so that they get back to a normal environment. And the other side to working from home is that small businesses like coffee shops, sandwich shops, cafes, uh, nail places, because some people go and get their nails done in their lunch break and things like that. And the CBD actually dies down. So that's the other side of it from a business point of view with working from home. So yeah, in summary, it is great. I enjoy it for my circumstance, but my circumstance when I started was a little bit different to where I am now. And I'll talk to you about that when we get to the clarity of mind and using a a tech product. So just be aware of the distractions, focus, and it will be a good experience, but have a solid routine. And the solid routine is shower, shave, get dressed for work and treat it as though you are going to work and then you should have some great outcomes. So that's the first of the serious uh, topics. And then now we'll go into um, what we've been up to. So uh, pop this up here. So this is... Uh, Brisbane, our capital of Queensland. Uh, that funny round building's got to be a casino, office building there. And we went up yesterday and we hadn't seen it for a while. We saw the original here in Australia and we went to see Rent. Now, Jane and I both love musicals. We're going to try to see more and more and we'll do reviews. We've got our own special review system. And basically, Jane used to be part of a theatre group when we lived down in Victoria. And I've, through the photography business, I was fortunate enough to photograph a lot of stage shows, um, musicals, Oh, I did one Shakespeare, did the photography for that. So some of the shows I've done, Man of La Mancha, Les Mis, uh, La Cage of Fall, which was one of my favourite. Uh, if you don't know La Cage of Fall, that was Birdcage with Robin Williams. Go and have a, have a watch. Absolutely brilliant. So thoroughly enjoyed it. But what was amazing, this was the stage as we were greeted when you went into the theatre. And for the life of me, I was unable to work out how this stage was going to work. Haven't seen the the main or the uh, original here in Australia. And it was amazing. But if you don't know the story, it's set in the 90s in New York when AIDS was at its ugliest Worst, I suppose. It's worse or I'll call it an ugly period because people were scared of it. People were treated poorly like lepers in some way, but no one knew what to do. No one knew how to handle it. So, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. And Jonathan Larson, who wrote the play, he did book, music and lyrics, did an excellent job. It's a great story. There's, I think it's eight main characters. And the unfortunate thing about it, on the opening night at Broadway, he passed away suddenly. So never got to see his masterpiece. I call it a masterpiece because it is a masterpiece of, of work. And he never saw that come to fruition as such. So getting back to the stage, Dan Barber is the set designer. And now this guy is a genius. So except for the the wings, so the left and right, uh, that centrepiece pulls apart and in behind the curtain there was another part to the stage. But the the main part, which is in the centre there, pulled apart and 
reenacted what was a bigger production to a smaller production, given that the Playhouse is quite a small theatre in the in the sense of theatre goes. So it's a secondary theatre. We have the Lyric Theatre and then the Playhouse, and the Playhouse is the smaller one. So what are my thoughts? Jane's not here to give her thoughts, but what are my thoughts? There's a couple of little subtle changes from the original. My opinion is that they were for the worse. They try to bring it into 2024, and uh, I'm no prude, but the subtleness of the gay and lesbian, lesbian community back in 1990 was not recreated in this. It was more upfront and would have been confronting for some people, but it's what it is. It is the sign of the times. So the main cast was New Zealand actor Nick Afoa, who played Collins. Martha Burhan played Mimi. She's also been in Hamilton, I think. Carl De Villa played Angel. Now, I hope I get his name right. Tana Laganaya. He played Benny. Noah Mullins was Mark. Callista Nelms was Maureen. Jared Smith was Roger, and I don't know the lady. It's printed, it's spelled T H Thendo. I'd say T H N D O. Play Joanne. So they were the main characters, and now as I as Jane and I were talking about it on the way home because we catch a train, just drops you off right at the theatre. So we caught a train. As we were discussing on the way back, and this is reflected in my school, not so much as in Jane's school. As an ensemble, and I think this is where they were trying to take the show, as an ensemble, it was brilliant. As individual characters went and how the story was told, and I could be a little bit critical here because I've seen movie, stage show a few times, some of the characters were left wanting as far as I'm concerned. For instance... Let me get back to the the characters and then I'll be able to let you know. So Collins, quite a good voice, couldn't dance. And there's quite a few dance numbers in it. The person that played, Martha that played Mimi, she has a couple of solos and she was very weak, but she won me back with her main solo, which is Goodbye Love in the second act. So, and the most disappointing, and to me, which is the glue behind the whole story, is Angel. And Carl DeVille was left wanting. When you see the vibrance and even a local rent that I've seen, the vibrance of Angel wasn't there with him. It could have been an off day, it could have been whatever, but I think they were um, more worried about the shock value of how they presented him than uh, him being a polished performer. So they're the only arguments I have with the cast. Noah Mullins, who played Mark, was exceptional. Tana, who played Benny, was very good, did his role exceptionally well. Callista Mel- and Nelmus, who played Maureen, brilliant. When she does a, a monologue, brilliant, absolutely funny. And Roger, who was played by Jared Smith, exceptional. I've been to a couple of rents where the person who plays Roger couldn't play the guitar, but this boy can play a guitar, which is good. And Thendo, who played Joanne, solid performance. So if I was going to rank him, it would have been Mark, Roger, Collins, Joanne, sorry, Joanne, Collins, Benny. Hang on, hang on, I had it in my head before. Now I've lost it. Wonderful things about going live. Mark, Roger, Benny, Joanne, Collins, Mimi, Angel. And that's where I'd probably sit them all. But the ensemble, the supporting people, un- 
unbelievable talent and they were exceptional and they solidified the show for me if it was if it wasn't for them it would have been a weak show to be honest uh, i know it's a little bit harsh but we jane and i when we go to a theater show our first comment that we normally say is, would you spend the money to go back again? And we both said no on this one. The, the set lighting ensemble was brilliant. And I, I, as I said earlier, I think that's what they were trying to achieve, that there was no one person to stand out. And it's a shame because that's what shows up. You know, we live in a world where everybody gets a participant certificate. And I think this is what they did with this because at the end there was no encore for the main characters which was a a little bit disappointing they work hard so they should get rewarded and the big reward for them is the audience so having said all that here's how we scored it we do it out of 15 we gave them 12 so the production for both of us was five each the ensemble I gave five, Jane gave four, Jane gave the main ca- cast three, and I gave the main cast two. So overall, as I said, very, very solid, great performance and all round, but as some individuals, not so great. But we're allowed to – sorry, I got – I had dinner last night. And it's This will lead me into – the next topic, which is clarity of mind and how I've got it. So basically I suffer from eczema, which is still giving me a, a little bit of annoyance. Last night it was either the curry or the peanuts in the in the satay. But back in 2021 on Boxing Day, I ended up in a mental health unit from nearly taking my life wasn't pleasant, wasn't pleasant for anyone who was around me, and that was family. And it, hang on, getting a bit drawn, nearly destroyed marriage, nearly destroyed me, nearly destroyed relationships with family members that I love and respect. And that was brought about by doctors buggering up opioid medication because basically I got damaged back, damaged neck, damaged shoulders, skin problem so it was all playing up got me down and that was part of the result so come 20 july 2023 don you meant i mentioned earlier and if you listen to the replay you hear me talk about it but don got me onto a technology that that's What's the word? Let your body heal itself. That's the best way you can put it because our body can heal itself. It's a technology that sets off your body's own reaction through light to help generate the GCKCU copper peptides, which then in turn helps your body regenerate its own stem cells. So the older we get, Uh, We lose our stem cells, but this technology has done a lot. So to give you some idea, within two hours of using this product, I was pain-free. So from July until now, anxiety was probably the biggest wash-up for me from the mental collapse, I suppose you could put it. So anxiety was the biggest thing i started a new job i just had to try to work i had to try to push myself and that was a challenge i i freaked out the first day to the point where i didn't know if i could work but what has happened is the use of the technology and if you'd like to reach out it's just pete at lifestyle on living.com.au and send me an email and i'll send you a link so you can learn about it as well But since probably September, I haven't even contemplated having an anxiety attack. I'm mentally, physically, and emotionally in a far better place 
than I have been in probably seven years. And that's all thanks to Don and the technology that I now use. And it's something simple. It's not intrusive. No drugs involved. It's just your body doing what it knows best. And the best thing I've heard is that when you, you know, you've got to get more vitamin D. So go outside in the sun. Sun doesn't give you the vitamins, your body does. And this is basically what this technology does. So follow me on TikTok and I'll put a link to the TikTok account. It's just at Lifestyle and Living, comma, you on TikTok. And that's where I do a lot of information about stem cells, copper peptides, technology, and how you best can be the best version of yourself. And yeah, it's just something I wish I had started earlier and I wouldn't have been in the place I was. I had slat tears in both shoulders fixed. I couldn't hold my head up because of the crushed neck fixed. Lower back problems fixed. Christmas day, night here in Australia, we had a tornado go through our area and the road out the front of our estate was blocked and I was out there lifting trees, helping people like I was a normal person. So I was sceptical, ain't no more. I know this technology works and it's helped many and heaps of people. And uh, whoever just put, let me jump on and I'll see if I can address you properly. Um, So I'll just, whoever just, you must be in the group or on Facebook. So whoever put it up, let me go and do something because it's live, don't have to be too formal. I think I know who it is. And if it is, thanks for popping on. My assumption is it's great. A good man. So, yeah, if you want the information, that's the email and I'll get it to you. Send you a link. And if it is you, Grant, give me a thumbs up and then I'll be able to shoot you the info even quicker Uh, because I can't see. Uh, I've got the phone. And because the way this works is that there's a a thing there that you can click and then I can actually see who is participating and commenting. So, but what I've got to do is there's two comments there. Uh, Yes, it is. And as soon as I finish the live, I will send it to you, Grant. So it's, like I was lifting logs, mate, and it was amazing. So, yeah, be happy to send it to you, happy to share it with, with anyone. So, yeah, so that's it for the clarity of mind, and it does. So I swear by it. So this is what the Sunday Lounge is, and the other side of the Sunday Lounge is as we build an audience and – things like that, is I want you to get involved because this is something that I'm passionate about where people that are over 45 and any age can just come. I'll talk about everyday things, things that I come across that can help others, get some interviews happening along the track. I've set this time up 10.15 because it's a fair time over in – Canada and Ireland and a couple of other places where I want to try to get people in on the show. But if not, I'll do interviews and they'll be long form interviews and they'll go on to the YouTube channel. So if you, you can follow us on YouTube as well. And for instance, next week's show could be a little bit different. I'm just waiting to hear back. Australia may be a first world country, but we have third world technology. I can tell you that. Like I'm fortunate enough now that I've got fibre to the house and I can maintain speed and do these sort of shows. But where I'm going next weekend, Stanthorpe, is a different kettle of fish. 
And so next week's show could be coming from here, Ridge Mill Estate. So we're staying there. They've got cabins there. We'll be doing reviews. Where else are we going? I'm going to Tenerfield. Well, we'll be going to, I can't remember the name of the restaurant, but out at Stanthorpe, they actually have a school there where you can actually learn to be a sommelier and learn the wine or vineyard industry, basically. And it's probably the best region for grapes in a, in Queensland. It's a true four-season climate. It gets quite cold down there. Last One of the last times we were there, it was minus six. So it does get actually get quite cold. So you get a good variety of grapes. The, the, there's one winery that we'll also go to, which is Tobin Wines. If you're from Victoria, it's not Tobin Brothers, the funeral parlour. Their wines aren't dead. They're very lively, very nice. And, yeah, so we'll be coming from there. I've got a mate who's the Deputy Lord Mayor of Shepparton. Got to try to get him on because he's a music lover. So it's going to be a whole venture of different pieces that we do. We're going up to the Sunshine Coast and we'll talk about that and do a show from there. But the the one thing I, I want to do, and I know I talked about in the earlier part when I was talking about working from home, the pros and cons, is that isolation's a problem. So if you know my background, it's fairly heavy in technology and I know it's not tactile, but this is, if this can help someone feel like they're a part of a group or a part of something that they enjoy, then I've achieved a great goal. But that's, this is what it's for. So down the track, as you can see, I did it earlier. If I switch this off, it'll come up even better. So I can go to things like this and pop this up so we can get interactive. And if you have decent setup and you want to pop on and just join the conversation, I can bring you in on the conversation. And hopefully we all benefit down the track and have a lot of fun. Today's topics were a, a little bit a little bit more serious, but that's the start I'll talk about next week. I know one of the things I gotta talk about is the importance of water. Uh, one of the things with the technology is you gotta drink a heap of water. And as I said, it's uh, quite good. So for the people that have participated, thank you. Uh, people that have uh, asked thing. So, yeah, Grant, as soon as I get off here, I'll shoot you a link and you can learn a fair bit about it. And to everyone that's on here at the moment, thanks for being a part of it. For everyone that was a part of it, thank you for being being here. And until next week, enjoy life because we only get one shot at it. So if you have, or here, before I do go, if you, I'll pop this back up again. And where are we here? If you want me to discuss something, just shoot it to Pete at lifestyleandliving.com.au and we'll have a chat about it. And... If you've got any ideas, suggestion, 